What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel inside of today's video We're going to be taking a look at the best 10 brothers for ranked So as you guys know, there's a bunch of changes to the new ranked system There's three new modifiers, there's map pool changes as well Meta changes with over 80 balance changes So this is more of a prediction, of course, once ranks dropped I'll do a bunch of guides and stuff So let me know down in the comment section below what you want to see also, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on all the ranked details next week. We'll be going ham and over 65% of you guys aren't subscribed. So subscribe, we're getting close to 200k. Anyways, we're going to be starting off with probably the best brawler in the game and the most consistent, always in ranked, it is Leon. So we know already, just looking at the game modes in ranked, every single game mode except for Heist, Leon's going to be the go-to pick. He wasn't nerfed really at all in the last set of balance changes. The only nerf to him was to his shield, but then he got an increase to his speed in hypercharge. So Leon is still absolutely insane. As I said, versatility is the key when you think of this ruler. He's going to be good into pretty much everything, and he's just going to be really annoying to deal with, especially with Invisi Heal. He cycles his hypercharge so quickly, and he's just a pain to deal with. In terms of the modifiers, he's going to be good in time detonation. Probably not the best to big friend but decent in quick fire as well. So he's going to be good in pretty much all of the modifiers. Let's jump into the next Broly must max out for the new ranked season. We have 8-bit. So no one's really talking about 8-bit, especially in the big friend modifier. I know it's only one out of the four modifiers that 8-bit is going to be really strong on, but hear me out. You need at least one brawler like this. So 8-bit, he's in a tankier range with 10k HP. So if you don't know what big friend is, all brawlers have their HP equal to the highest HP brawler on the team. So if you pick 8-bit and then you have a tick on your team, that tick's going to turn into 10k HP and the reason why he's so going to be so strong in this game mode as well is because of the boosted booster star power you're going to be able to just shred all the high hp brawlers and of course it's 8-bit he's not like the other tanks he has good range so on those longer range maps with this modifier he's going to be insane on and of course shorter range maps you're just going to pick a tanky option like el primo or something like that but again 8-bit is just not really talked about and even outside of the modifier we have quick fire as well Basically, in quick fire, you're going to have brawlers with a lot of projectiles. They're going to benefit out of this modifier the most. So 8-bit, of course, have a lot of projectiles. He's going to be good in that. Uh, and also, time detonator. Literally, it's really open map, and 8-bit's going to excel there. So he's going to be really strong everywhere. And even in the classic modifier, we've got Heist, where he's really strong on. He's a decent gem carrier. So he's going to be super versatile in this new ranked mode. So jumping into the next brawler, must absolutely max out for the new ranked season. We have Piper. So Piper has been annoying a lot of people recently. Recently. I think she's going to get even better within this meta in particular. So if you take a look at the modifiers, she's actually really strong on one of them, which is timed at detonation. So basically all the terrain will just get destroyed. So it'll be a nice open map. And of course, Piper is going to be really strong there. She's not going to be the best in the other modifiers. Quick fire, believe it or not, actually not going to be the best for her. But in the normal modifier as well, she's just really strong in a lot of these maps. So of course, Bounty, she's one of the best brawlers. You take a look at Brubble, Goalkeeper's Dream, a really open map. Piper is going to be one of the best picks there. Also, Gem Grabber is another really open map, Rustic Arcade. So, Piper is going to be one of the best picks in that map. Of course, she's good in heist and she's really strong in knockout. So, I think the map pool really favors her. I think one of the modifiers really favors her. And overall, she's always been one of the better brawlers in the game, anyways. So, I think she's really going to be one of the best brawlers in rank. So, jumping into the fourth brawler, you must absolutely max out. It is Larry and Laurie. So, somehow, you haven't maxed these brawlers out yet considering their broken past they're still really strong right now most pros still think they're like a top 10 brawler in the game even after several nerfs so this is more so of just the classic modifier they're going to be okay in the other modifiers but in particular classic as i said they're just going to be such a versatile option you can pretty much pick them everywhere they're going to be better of course on maps with a lot of walls the more open the map is the less they're going to be able to thrive but you take a look at the map pool, you can pretty much consider using them everywhere. They're really strong in high still with the other star power, which increases your reload speed. And just across the board, they're super versatile. The best thing about them is actually Laurie right now. The bot is just so hard to deal with. He's got some insane dukes, which even pros struggle to hit because uh, it's so unpredictable. And then, of course, when it gets in range, he's just absolutely shred. So Larry and Laurie still really strong right now. One of the most meta brawlers, so make sure to max him out. Next up, we have Pearl. So she's still going to be really insane saying it in this ranked season she was really strong in the previous meta and she's still really good right now so she's going to be even better because three out of the four modifiers she's going to be one of the best options of course in classic she's just really strong in the meta currently you take a look at quick fire so again those brothers with multiple projectiles per attack are going to be really strong so pearl she's going to have infinite ammo in this game mode and then on time detonation as well 
she's going to be really strong because she's actually counters more of the snipers. You're going to see snipers on this game mode. So, of course, her with the overcooked gadget, she's going to be able to one-shot all of her snipers. It's just absolutely beautiful. So, in terms of the map pool as well, she's really strong in bounty, really strong in knockout, and pretty good in literally every way. You take a look at all the maps. The more open it is, probably is better for Pell, but she's still good in closed areas as long as it's not brawl on a really grassy map like center stage. You're going to have good success rate with Pell. As I said, she didn't really get a nerf with uh, the recent balance changes. She's still super strong, so make sure to use that in this current ranked season. But into the next brawler who you must absolutely max out, especially for this ranked season, it is Bell. So Bell's a little bit of an underrated one. People have been saying her hypercharge isn't the best. It's not really strongest, but at least she's one of the few snipers with a hypercharge. So that's going to be a big benefit, especially in competitive play. But I think she's going to be pretty underrated in a few of these game modes. So. In Big Friend in particular, you might think, well, she doesn't deal the most damage, but her super in general is just really strong against tanks. So imagine the hypercharge against all of these high HP brawlers. It's going to be really, really underrated in my opinion. Also, you've got time detonation as well. She's going to be that kind of sniper that's good against enemy snipers, but also good against, I don't know, the non-convenient picks up. You know, the enemy might go a tank again. So Bell's going to be good against that. And again, you take a look at the map pool. There's just so many open maps in the map pool right now. So Bell's going to really benefit out of that. Again, I think she's going to be underrated. She's never banned out in Power League. I always go her in previous Power League seasons as well. So in the new rank system, I think she's going to get even better. Next up on the most max out list, we have Colette. So in particular, I look at one bar to five straight away. Now I think Colette is going to be easily the best brawler. And that is Big Friend. So of course, Colette loves facing off against tanks. If you don't know, literally a couple of shots from Colette will literally just wipe half the tank's HP off and it's really easy to hit them. But not only that, you can two shot them and super and you kill every single tank or every single brawler in the game. So Colette is just going to feast from this game mode. So I'll be surprised if you're even able to pick her in this game mode because people should ban her out. But if not, if they're dumb for whatever reason, it's a free game. Colette will just eat everybody up. Also, she's just consistent and really strong in the meta overall. So she's going to be okay in the other modifiers, but in particular classic. She's going to be really good in heist. She's going to be a solid option in brawl and gem grab as well. And as I said, she's pretty much a top 10 brawler still in the meta with that hypercharge. So for me, she's a must play in this ranked season. So the next brawler must absolutely max out. It is Otis. So a brawler that's always underwhelming for most people or underrated. But I think quite quickly right now, he's one of the best brawlers in the game since the damage buff. It's really helped him out. And in particular, I look at these modifiers and I think he's going to be a great asset for your team. So again, he's not really going to be banned out. People just underrate him consistently. You take a look at one of the modifiers, quick fire. Again, Otis, he has a lot of projectiles within one piece of ammo. So he's just going to get unlimited ammo back once he starts hitting those shots. You take a look at some of the other modifiers as well. He's going to be fairly decent across the board. But again, classic is where he's going to shine in as well. And Otis is just really strong because you take a look at all the hypercharges. Otis will essentially hard counter every single hypercharge in your game, even if it's a bad matchup because he has a super that can pretty much waste the whole duration of a hypercharge. So in that sense, he's a great asset for your team overall. And he's always just going to be good if you're playing draft and you're just scared of facing tanks. He's going to be good and he's still okay against long range brawlers as well because he has a surprisingly good range about him. And again, since the buff, he's just been getting so strong. A top 10 brawler in the game right now. So it's really vital that you max him out. But into the next brawler, must absolutely max out for this ranked season. We have Cordelia. So his hypercharge, as everyone predicted, is just absolutely insane. It's a free kill every single time, especially against those tanky units. So you think of Big Friend, for example. I think he could be an underrated pick in that game mode in particular. And he actually likes facing off against tank as Cordelia because you're able to get free supers all of the time. Also, you think of just a classic modifier, of course. I'm literally just playing ladder right now, and he's just so easy to push. So, of course, he's going to be good in that modifier. So, two out of the four modifiers, I think he's going to be decent. Again, I'm not sure how we fare off in the other modifiers, but it's Cordelius at the end of the day. He's always been a top 10 brawl in the meta. And you just take a look at the map pool selection. He's just really consistent across the board. He's good in heist, gem grab, brubble, hot zone. Not so good in the longer range game modes, but four out of the six pretty solid so Cordelius probably a top five brawler in the game right now so it just makes sense to max him out now jumping into the final brawler you must max out for this ranked season we have Griff so Griff was somewhat towards the bottom of the meta before his huge damage buff which has helped him out so much I don't know if things are going to level off and he'll just become like a balanced brawler but for now I'm loving playing him on ladder and I think in ranked it will definitely correlate because that damage buff he's going to be able to shred through those high HP brawlers on big friend but in particular the one I'm looking at is quickfire again 
he has so many projectiles per ammo so of course it's going to be really good in quick fire and of course the classic modifier is going to be strong so three out of four he's going to be pretty strong on even on time detonation he's going to be underrated because of his business resilient star power he's able to get a lot of pressure because of that again you take a look at the map pool and he's going to be good in every single scenario also his super buff as well he's able to chain supers a lot easier now i can definitely feel that so for me i think this is definitely griff's meta really underrated People are not going to look at him in terms of the band stage. So pretty safe pick overall. And again, map pool, beautiful for him. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Again, this is just a prediction. So I'll be doing more solid videos in terms of guides, in terms of all the new modifiers next week. So make sure you subscribe for that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, as I said. And I'll see you guys next time.